COVID-19 effect, the effect that the coronavirus has on the real estate market. We're joined today by a good friend of mine, Lex Levenrad. For those of you that have been watching me, uh, know for many, many years, uh, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of closings with Lex, which we'll talk about in a minute. So thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you taking the time and coming on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me, Kevin. So for those of you that are watching, please like, create a watch party, share this video. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about the effects of COVID-19. We talked a little bit about on the real estate market, but we're going to talk about it specifically today about the real estate market and about investors, how investors are handling the coronavirus global pandemic. And there's no one else that I can feel could, could talk on this more than Lex, because we went through the crash of 2008 and it was painful. I mean, we talk about it often, you know, when we talk off camera, on camera, at events, and, and we talk about the pain and suffering we went through many, many years ago. Uh, and then you just produced a pretty cool video the other day uh, with this exact topic, talking about the effects of, of COVID-19. Right. For those of you that want to see the full video of what, what uh, Lex talked about, you can check out his YouTube page and Facebook page. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Tell everyone a little bit about who you are and how you got started first in the market so they know who you are. All right. Well, I got started in Florida real estate in 2003. And actually, believe it or not, my first closing was at Independence with Kevin. And the guy that taught me real estate, Ben, uh, recommended Kevin to me. And uh, I did my first closing there. And I've been uh, closing with Kevin at Independence Title ever since then. So um, uh, pretty much like you mentioned, uh, started out, I was just a landlord, pretty much bought properties, fixed them, rented them out. And that was awesome until the market imploded in 2007 and end of 2006. And that required us to adapt and to function differently. And um, and we did. And as you mentioned, that was a, a not an easy time for any real estate investor. A lot of real estate investors got wiped out. And I always like to compare investors. I call them the, the, the original, you know, like the old timers who were there pre-financial crisis and the new people that came in like in 11 and 12 and have only seen the good times. Yeah, I mean, there were definitely some good times. There were some bad times. I've been doing this as well since 2001, actually, and then 2003 when we opened the title company. And, you know, what we've noticed is that people just didn't plan. People didn't plan for a rainy day. And, and that's part of the challenges that we're seeing here today, although we haven't really you know, from a title perspective, yes, we're down in closings, but we thought we were going to be. But we haven't seen a drastic effect on the real estate market from the sense of like restaurants are completely out of business. You know, real estate is still a, an essential business. So agents are writing deals and uh, investors are closing deals. But you talked about something unique and let's go into it a little bit uh, here where you talked about the unemployment rate and how it connects itself to the amount of homeowners versus the amount of foreclosures. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that was pretty, uh, pretty eye opening to hear. Right. Well, I think that, you know, for people who didn't go through the previous financial crisis, we really started our whole real estate education arm coming out of the financial crisis at the end of 2008. In fact, our first real estate investment club meeting was in October of 2008, just two weeks after Bear Stearns and Lehman collapsed. And uh, the only person to show up at that meeting was myself and Kevin. So that was our first real estate meeting. And uh, the following year in May, we did our first uh, distressed real estate boot camp, our wholesaling boot camp. And we, the reason we called it distressed is because we were focusing on distressed real estate, namely foreclosures, short sales, and bank-owned properties. So I think that Back then, a lot of us, both of us included, were caught left-footed, meaning we weren't ready for it, we didn't anticipate it. Uh, I think that this time around, having gone through that experience as the market went up and up and up and up, um, more experienced investors like uh, uh, Kevin, anyone who's pretty much been in this market for some period of time, started questioning how long can this go on now? Well, none of us anticipated COVID. I don't think that's something that could be anticipated. But what we did anticipate is that, hey, we could be in like the eighth inning of a nine inning game and that maybe it's a good time to start taking some money off the table and to start stacking up some cash and getting ready for any kind of change that there would be. So I think that to me, the, 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 the most disconcerting part about this is that I think a lot of the new investors are not really prepared for pain. And so what I mean by that is, is that 
If 22, now they say almost 30 million people unemployed, uh, let's assume the majority of those people do go back to work, but what if 5 million of them don't? And what if half of those 5 million people own homes? That translates into a lot of foreclosures and short sales, and that'll ultimately become bank home properties. And you can put government moratoriums on it, but it's just a question of time before they're still going to have to be paid at some point. So I do see that as something that will be trickling down the pipeline, and that is something that definitely is pause for concern. Yeah, and they haven't really released the guidelines. You know, we've been doing so much with the SBA and the PPP loan and the IDLE loans and, and researching, and, and it's still even those guidelines are, are changing every single day. They just released something. Actually, uh, one of our, our mutual clients sent it to me today talking about they're going to actually put on heavier investigation tools on these loans to see businesses that truly need it or businesses uh, that just took it because they were giving away free money. Um, so that comes down to the same thing when we're talking about rents and mortgages, you know, everyone thinks, well, I'm just going to not make my mortgage payment for three months. And they don't realize that it's either going to compound uh, and be due, uh, due on sale or do, you know, do at the three at the three month mark. Or they may actually get smart like they did in the in the 08 crisis where they were able to tack it on to the end of the loan, uh, which would be better, obviously, for the homeowner, because no homeowner, if they can't pay it now, they're not going to be able to pay three months worth in, in three months from now. Right. Uh, so, you know, we, we talk about a lot of foreclosures, you know, and we always say that someone else's crisis is uh, another person's opportunity. So, you know, where do you see it? Obviously, we're, we're going to see a foreclosure market. We are going to see short sales and foreclosures and evictions, and it's just going to rise because people are out of work. People are not going to be able to catch up. So what are you teaching your students? I know you just had a boot camp uh, that we supplied a bunch of hand sanitizers for, and it wound up being uh, a lot of online people attending the boot camp. Where do you see the changes in, in the market? Well, I mean, those hand sanitizers were like a life send because nobody could get hand sanitizers anywhere, but we managed to get a whole stack of them. And when people came to the boot camp, we'll make sure just to give one hand sanitizer to each individual that was at the boot camp. And that boot camp was the first time we actually streamed via Zoom. And we literally had a tripod with a Logitech webcam on it. And we streamed the entire three day boot camp. So we gave people the option of if they didn't want to show up live, they could watch the stream. Um, with regards to where I think that it's going, I think that right now um, it's a real easy time to buy. And I mean, it's a, a, a really easy time to buy and it's a difficult time to sell. And I think it's going to get more difficult to sell as time goes by, because I don't think that the, the, the foreclosures or the short sales or the bank on properties have even really started. In other words, nobody has had a foreclosure lawsuit filed against them because of COVID-19. And it will be quite some time, probably, you know, around six months or so till that happens. And then it has to go through the legal system, which is about nine months. So I think that a good way to position yourself right now and what we're doing and what I'm doing is focusing right now on selling and taking as much money off the table as possible and getting prepared for six to nine or 12 months from now where prices may be uh, 20 percent lower or, th or even 30 percent lower. And that will allow us to come back in and take advantage of those lower prices. You know, and a lot of people, they, you know, they watch what you put online. They watch uh, you know, all the stories, how you talk about, you know, your books that you write, you know, we co-authored a book together, uh, you know, and, and, and they see all of this stuff and they say, it's just it real. Yeah. Well, there you go. They title tips and secrets. Uh, you know, so, so we write these books and, and we present all over how great the economy is and how well we're doing. And, and then you have all of these people who turn around and say, can't be true. You know, the negative naysayers. And, you know, you, you put an important video up with uh, the, I think this morning, that just shows the proof. You know, I'm a very transparent company. So people ask how many deals we're doing and I don't fluff it. If we do 80, I don't say we do 90. Um, you know, that's just not something we do. We wanna be honest and, and transparent. You know, and, and you posted a cool video today where you actually showed the check of making money, a six figure check. I mean, these are people that, that don't make six figures in, in three years of working. Right. Here you made it on one deal. Uh, and you show the numbers, you show the statistics. So let's talk to the person that's watching this that is home because we know everyone is, is on lockdown right now. Maybe the restaurant worker uh, that, that puts some money away is maybe living at home with their parents or maybe has a very low rental, uh, you know, rental payment that they have to make. And, and they're just like, they're watching all of this content 
and they're saying, I want to be Lex. And you know, we know tons of stories. Many of your students that who I know personally, uh, you know, we, we always talk about the one that worked at the Wendy's drive through and, and completely changed their life. So let's talk to that person that's watching this video because they're home on quarantine and they just want to do something different with their life to be able to recession proof it when, not if, but when the next downturn comes or the next global pandemic or the next wave of COVID-19 comes, how would one position themselves in this business in order to survive it? Well, I think that the first thing is not to be negative because if you hear somebody like me saying, well, I think prices could be down 20%, it's very easy to perceive that as a negative thought and say, well, if that's the case, I should avoid real estate, but quite the contrary, because right now I just got a 15 year mortgage uh, a quote at 2.25%. Two months ago, my 15 year mortgage quote was 3.25%. So that interest rate differential is so huge that I think that people out there right now that don't own a home, this is a really, really good opportunity for you to buy one because you're going to be able to buy it easier and at a discount relative to where you would have a month or two ago, and you're gonna lock in a lower interest rate. Those of you that are thinking about maybe buying a rental property and becoming landlords, I would say this is a real good time to do that too, once again, because the interest rates are so low. So I think that um, you know it's very easy to have this whole COVID-19 create a situation where you go into negative mode or even worse, you're just sitting at home watching Netflix and eating junk food. I think what we need to do is use this as an opportunity to prepare and to actually figure out a way to prosper out of this because there will be a lot of unemployed people. There will be a lot of disgruntled people, but at the same time, there are opportunities. So I think it's up to us each and every one of us to to find those opportunities and to really turn the lemon of the situation into lemonade. In other words, make make something positive out of it. And and I think the positive is the low interest rates. Absolutely. And I know one of the things you know, we, both of us have authored uh, an Amazon.com best-selling book. Uh, yours is here up on the screen. You can see. Her. So for those of you that are sitting home, uh, tell them a little bit. I mean, I know you give this book away for free right on your website here. Wholesaling bank-owned properties. You know, and, and, and I give you the credibility. You know, I, we've been doing deals since uh, 2003. I still do deals with your mentors that, that taught you the business. Uh, and I do business with your students. So it's almost like, you know, the, you were the student and then you became the mentor. And now we do the, you know, deals with you, with your students, uh, with your students' students, some of the students that choose to teach others. Um, you know, I know Mike Hill is a big one and, and we do a lot of stuff with him. So right. quite you know, a few of my students uh, teach other people now how to invest in real estate as well. And that's yeah, I mean, listen, and that's a proud, you know, that's a proud moment to to know where you were and what you've become and the people who, whose lives you've changed and the those people, the trickle down effect. So tell people a little bit about this book. Uh, that you're offering on your site if they were to go here, LexLevenrad.com, and, and they get a free copy. So Wholesaling Bank Owned Properties was the, the book that I wrote originally back then, right coming out of the financial crisis. And it's gone through every six months or so, I have an updated revision. So the 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 version that's on the site, and it's also on Amazon right now, is actually updated as of April 2020. So it's uh, uh, substantially up to date. Uh, from just a few weeks before the whole COVID-19 thing. And basically, you know, what I find, like looking at the comments on my YouTube videos, on many of the online media, a lot of people just don't understand the concept of why somebody would sell a house that's, let's say, a $100,000 house for a discount. Why would somebody sell a $100,000 house for, let's say, fifty dollars or $60,000? And the that book, I think, does a good job of first of all, starting in the introduction, speaking about real estate cycles, going all the way back to like 1989 and the savings and loan crisis and putting that into perspective and seeing that, hey, you know, we go through this every 18 years. We go up 10, 10 12 years. We go down four or five years. And uh, real estate's going to probably have a little bit of a rough time in certain sectors over the next uh, short period of time. But guess what? As prices dip, there will be opportunists that come in because as you said, crisis creates opportunity and you're gonna have foreign buyers coming in. You know, There's been some currencies that have completely collapsed over the last few months. And there's a lot of people talking about this 
uh, effect of the dollar strengthening relative to emerging market currencies. So you've got uh, uh, currencies like the Mexican peso, the South African rand, that have just completely collapsed, lost, uh, you know, um, 25, 30 percent of their value. And so people that are in these countries that are worried about their savings are going to gravitate towards U.S. dollars and U.S. real estate. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's going to happen is there's literally trillions of dollars of money that's sitting in cash ready to invest in real estate. So any kind of meaningful dip that we have, you can ex expect Wall Street and private equity to scoop in and buy up these properties just like they did after the previous financial crisis. Now, one of the things I, I really enjoy about speaking with you is that you have a, a very large background in education. You know, you do your research, you know about many different markets, many different countries, uh, many different nationalities. I mean, you really do your homework when you're looking to, to speak on a topic and teach on a topic. So, uh, you know, and I appreciate that because I watch all of your videos. The second they come out, I get the alerts, uh, you know, and, and, and I just enjoy it. I enjoy seeing what's going on in the market. Um, let, let's shift a little bit because we talked a lot about the real estate market. Uh, I follow a lot of online influencers. Obviously, one that comes to mind is Gary V. Uh, I know you do a lot with online social media marketing. You wrote a book talking about social media and internet marketing for real estate uh, many years ago before anyone knew anything about online marketing. Uh, and, and the one common theme that I'm seeing, and full disclosure, I've pulled back on, on some of my online marketing. Uh, some are saying double down, some are saying don't double down, save your cash. What, what are you looking at as far as lead generation and, and you know, things that are working for you uh, in order to generate business? Well, I think, you know, social media is something, I mean, I wrote that book back in 2010 when you could buy a pay-per-click uh, lead for three cents. And nowadays that's about a dollar twenty. So, so um, a lot has changed since then. But I think going back to the concept you mentioned, Gary V and his first book, uh, Crush It, which I think I read back right around then, which had a very big impact on me, is is that it really all boils down to content at the end of the day. And I think that there's a lot of people out there now more than ever, with so many people sitting at home, that are starving for information. And one of the big issues that I have is, is that there's a lot of things that people could be doing, skills that they could be learning that could translate into money. So instead of sitting at home in despair because let's say they got laid off or they're unemployed or their work is temporarily shut down, they could be using that as an opportunity to learn a skill. As an example, we pay video editors anywhere from 60 to $80 an hour just to edit those same videos that are going on YouTube and such. And it's hard to find video editors. And, and so there's a lot of skill sets that go into the online marketing, a lot of it around video because so much of it, just like this live stream we're doing right now, revolves around video and, 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 and Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera. So I think that uh, social media is something that you should absolutely double down on. And I think the biggest challenge for people is just getting over the hang up of actually just getting out there and doing this sort of thing and going live. But once you can actually get over that, if you have something, a skill set, and it doesn't have to be real estate, if you have any skill set, whatever you're good at, you should let the world know and you should focus on getting better in it. And if you can learn how to be the best in your field of expertise, you will always make money and you will always survive. Now, I start uh, giggling a little bit as I start seeing all the people that are using this platform, which you know, uh, StreamYard platform, to stream live videos now. I'm watching all these people, all the gurus are starting to use them now. I'm like, well, we've been using it, you know, since the, the pandemic started. Uh, so it's starting to see all of the people that are starting to catch up and all the people that are starting to do daily live streams, you know, cause they're realizing how important it is to get the message out because people aren't coming to live events, you know, but they are on social media, they are on Facebook, they are on Instagram and YouTube, and they're just looking for so much content uh, you know, we, we people were thinking there's no way you can possibly do a video a day. And, and we've had to stop. We've had to turn people away because we've had so many people inquire about coming on live just to have a conversation. You know, you look at Gary Vee. Gary Vee does it every day. He just gets on talking about coffee, having coffee, drinking wine and, right. and just sharing some information and bringing on guests that spark into uh, maybe a conversation for someone who's sitting home and is, is down and out because they lost their job. So you know, it's, it's all about just putting this content out there and, and just getting people to follow because together in this business, we're, we're going to be okay. 
I, I really think we are going to survive. Um, so let's shift back one more question because we're at the 20 minute mark. I, I like to keep them short and sweet. Uh, so you see here one of this is actually one of your mentoring students spoke about saying have, they, we haven't seen the retail prices come down yet, especially uh, in South Broward. So what are you seeing as far as the market? Uh, I don't know that we've seen the effect yet because you know we're still looking at numbers as well from pre-COVID-19. When are we going to start seeing these prices? Obviously, you don't have a crystal ball, um, but we're not seeing them yet. Well, we're definitely not seeing them in the retail market because I posted on Facebook this morning, as an example, a uh, house that we sold last week. It sold at full price retail. And uh, I was just on the phone literally as we started this live with another closing um, on a house that's actually closing today, which is also retail sales. So I think that there is no problem in pricing on the retail side yet. But I have seen a significant move on the wholesale side. And what I mean by that is, is that the buyers initially pulled back, uh, everyone, myself included, and uh, I instructed all my students to adjust their buy price to 15 or 20% lower than where they were buying, let's say a month ago or before this whole COVID-19. So uh, it has not affected retail now, which is I think a very, very good opportunity for you to uh, be able to sell whatever you can now, which is why I think you should be aggressive in doing that on stuff that you don't have long-term financing in place or is not a long-term portfolio hold. I think you should try and take as much of that stuff and put long-term financing in place. So a combination of, let's say you've got uh, 10 houses and you refinance five of them into 15-year mortgages and then sell the other five, maybe the five you don't want to hold long-term because you don't, uh, they don't have the qualities you're looking for, they're not in the neighborhoods you're looking for. And I think that you'll make yourself a lot safer by doing that because A, you'll raise cash and B, you'll put yourself into a position where you'll have that long-term financing on those other properties. So now if prices do dip down 20, 25 or 30 percent, you'll be able to just go back in and start buying again. And um, and and throughout this whole thing of prices going down, prices going up, you can always wholesale and wholesaling is always going to be viable because buyers are always looking for deals. And every day we send out our email with about 20 new deals and buyers are calling us every day and that's not going to change. Awesome. So all in all, the topic was the impact of COVID-19 coronavirus on the real estate market. You give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. I, I, I give it a thumbs up. I mean, I'm, I'm long term bullish on real estate always because we live in the greatest country. We live in a place where everyone's always trying to get to. Uh, there's a shortage of housing, especially in the lower priced affordability area and buying a house and, and renting it out and putting a 15 year mortgage on it is about the safest retirement plan anyone can have. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking, uh, you know, the last 20 plus minutes uh, out of your day. I know you're super busy with closings and mentoring students and trainings. And, uh, you know, you're a hard guy to get on a video call like this. So I appreciate you taking the time. How can users get a hold of you if they're watching this video? Obviously, we have Lex Levenrad up on the your website up there. Is that the best way? All my handles are Lex Levenrad. So on Instagram, it's Lex Levenrad. And my website is LexLevenrad.com. That's pretty much the easiest way to um, to get hold of me. And follow it. Obviously, everyone check him out online. You're going to see the stories of the clients. I can tell you his students. So, you know, forget about just the deals he's doing, but the people he has taught the business to are in my office weekly doing closings. Obviously, now they're online, uh, but the deals are closing every single week. So, again, thank you very much, Lex, for coming in. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me, Kevin. For those of you that are watching, don't forget to share. On Friday, we have a very, very, very VIP top level guest here. You're going to see Tom Ferry, who is the number one real estate trainer in the country. So he trains thousands and thousands of real estate agents and real estate investors, uh, multiple seven figure uh, agents under his training program. So he's going to be on live at two o'clock on Friday. We have a very short time with him. Thank God we were able to secure a, a very short interview with him, uh, but it's going to be amazing. It's going to be live. If you have questions, please submit them to me ahead of time because we are not going to have time to take questions probably in the comments section because uh, we only have a limited time with him. So for all of you watching, thank you so much. I appreciate it. As always, we look forward to seeing you at the closing table once the business picks up and, and our doors open back up to have you in our office. But in the meantime, we'll see you virtually. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title. 
Don't forget to stay safe, stay inside, and we'll see you on the next video Friday at 2 p.m. Have a great day, everyone.